Okay, everybody, I'd like to do a video on a math problem. Uh, this is a typical problem you might see in an introductory algebra class um, or possibly for a GRE G math. This is referred to as an opposite direction travel problem. Let's read it together. Train A leaves New York at 7 a.m. traveling to Boston at 80 miles an hour. Train B leaves Boston at 7.45 a.m. So notice 45 minutes later, we're going to need that later, traveling to New York at 70 miles an hour on a parallel track. Okay, If the distance between New York and Boston along the tracks is 210 miles, at what time will the two trains pass each other? Now, I know there's some of you out here going, you read this and you go, God, I hate math. You know, and these problems can be kind of overwhelming when you first look at them, but if you really just break it down and eliminate what you, what information is important and eliminate uh, information that's not, then I think it becomes very straightforward. So here's a strategy for generally, for solving, uh, problem solving here, word problems like this. The first thing to do is understand the problem. Read it, reread it. So this again is an opposite direction problem. What I like to do is underline important information. So we have two vehicles here. Let me use a different color. We have uh, train A, okay, and then we have train B, and they're heading toward each other on a parallel track. So this is not like the Adams family. Uh, the dad's not going to crash two trains together, thank goodness. There's two trains traveling uh, to, toward each other on parallel tracks, and we want to know what time do the trains pass each other. Okay, what else do we have here? We have a train leaving, a tr our red train, train A, leaving at 7 a.m., traveling at 80 miles an hour. The blue train leaves at 7.45 a.m., traveling at 70 miles an hour, and then finally, the distance between the two cities is 210 miles. Now, why didn't I underline New York or Boston? Because it's really kind of irrelevant information. We could be traveling between two, any two cities in the world. And these could also could be cars as well, or these could be planes. You know, well, a plane would probably fall out of the sky if it was traveling that slow. But anyway, um, I underline the important information. Okay, and so we want to find out what time do the trains pass each other, all right? Now, if you could do nothing else, if you didn't know how to do algebra, you could figure this out without algebra. Typically, these math test problems, they have the right answer here, and then they have an answer that's answer or answers that are close to it, and then they usually have nonsense answers to catch the people that are just guessing. Okay, so if I were to just make an intelligent guess, let's just try 9 o'clock. Let's think about it. We'll think, uh, let's think. If the red train left at 7, traveling at 80 miles an hour, at 9 o'clock they would have went, whoops, they would have went 80 plus 80, right? They would have went 80 miles in the first hour and 80 miles in the second hour. So they would have gone 160 miles toward the other train, okay? And in the meantime, the blue train, it left at 7.45 a.m. Now it's been traveling for at least one hour. So it's definitely gone the 70 miles already, right? Because this is like one hour and 15 minutes to get to nine o'clock. So these two values together are 230. That's bigger than 210. So these trains have already passed each other, okay? So we got to pick a shorter time, maybe this time. You could try 8.15 and think, well, at 8.15, let's just say this is a little over an hour. So I don't know. Let's just approximate and say, okay, maybe the red train went 100 miles an hour. Let's just take a guess. Well, the blue train left at 7.45. It's only been going for half an hour or half of 70. In other words, 35. So if you added both of those up, you'd get 135 miles. So the trains still uh, haven't passed each other because 210 miles is the total distance. So if I were to take an intelligent guess or I ran out of time, I could figure this out and say this was 845. But now let's try to go ahead and um, solve this. 
Um, in a second video, I'm actually going to do this with algebra, kind of follow this through. Uh, but let's see if we could figure it out with a table. And we, we just figured it out, or we kind of eliminated incorrect answers, and we're making a guess and saying it's B. Okay, but let's move on, and let's see if we can figure this out without algebra. For you visual learners, I always like pictures. So here we have our red train, train A, traveling at 80 miles an hour, leaving at 7 a.m. Okay, so it's, it's going to the right. This train B now is traveling the other way at 70 miles an hour, and it left at 7.45 a.m. Somewhere in the middle here, uh, they're going to meet and pass each other. This distance is 210 miles. Now this really isn't too important, but if they had left at the same time, traveling at the same speed, they would meet somewhere halfway in the middle. But because this train got a head start and it's also moving faster, it's actually going to meet the blue train maybe somewhere closer over here. So maybe I should just even move this question mark over, over here somewhere. But you get the idea. This train travels a certain distance in a certain amount of time, and this train would have traveled a certain amount of distance in that same time. This is an opposite direction problem. So we're going to use three ideas here in solving these problems. Vehicles, cars, trains, and these problems, they move at constant speeds. Now, in the real world, obviously, a train doesn't start at a dead stop and then just get to 80 miles an hour a second later. It has to speed up, right? And a train may have to slow down based on track conditions, weather conditions, and then there may be a stretch where it can speed up and be going faster than 80 miles an hour. But in general, for these problems, you assume that this is their constant speed or this is their average speed over a particular amount of time. But for our cases here, we can just pretend that the train is moving at a constant speed, 80 miles an hour, and this one's moving at 70. Okay, for this next formula, this is one you got to remember. I live in Colorado, and the first question I ask my students is, what's the name of our bus system or our light rail system? And they'll say RTD. I think it stands for Regional Transportation District, Regional Transportation Department. So I tell them, remember, rate times time equals distance. In other words, the speed or the rate that a vehicle travels times its time times a time equals the distance it travels. In other words, if I get on the highway and I travel 75 miles an hour, in some, some states you can do that, for two hours, 75 times two would be 150 miles. So if I go 75 miles an hour for two hours, I would go 150 miles. Finally, the last thing we're going to need is the distance traveled by train A in a particular time plus the distance traveled by train B in that same time equals 210 miles. We're going to need that for this problem. And that's what I tried to illustrate here with these arrows. The red train travels a particular distance in a certain amount of time. In that same time, the blue train is going to go a certain amount of distance. So the red arrow plus the blue arrow, this distance plus this distance has to be equal to 210. Now you could solve this totally without using algebra. So let's do it first without algebra. Without algebra, think about it. At 7 a.m., what I did here is I made myself a timetable from 7 to 9 a.m., and I broke it up in 15-minute intervals. If train A is traveling 80 miles an hour in one hour, it goes 80 miles by 8 o'clock, right? Another 80 miles in another hour. So it, gone, it went a total of 160 miles. Train B doesn't start at 7 o'clock. It doesn't get started till 7.45 a.m. So this, here's where train B starts. In one hour, from 7.45 to 8.45, it goes 70 miles because it's traveling 70 miles an hour. So in the interest of time, if you were to complete this table and fill it in, here's our red train going 80 miles in one hour. Well, in a half hour, it would go half 80 miles or 40 miles an hour. And in 15 minutes, it would go half of 40 or 20. So every 15 minutes, it goes 20 miles. The blue train is going to go 70 miles in one hour, 35 miles in a half hour. Eventually, you could see when you add up these two distances, 
This is the correct answer, 210 miles. Thanks for watching.